Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this Adobe Premiere Pro CC tutorial, we're going to take a look at what's new in the 2017 April update. So there's a lot of changes to some video and audio adjustments that we're going to make, and I'm going to be discussing the most major ones, most notably the new title tools and text tools, and also some new audio editing tools. So if you notice now, it's kind of weird for me, there should be a graphics section in the editing panels. However, I don't seem to have it yet. Maybe they're still rolling it out fully. But all of you should be able to go to Windows after you update and choose either Essential Graphics or Essential Sound. So if I click on one of these, it'll open up a new window and I'll just put both of these into the right hand side so we can work with them. So I'll click, I'll drag that over here so it's easy to work with. And you can do the same thing for Essential Sound. And now I have them both here. So what this means is that instead of doing things the old way or the legacy way of creating titles, and you can still find that under File, New, Legacy Title now, where everything would be laid out and this is kind of how you'd have to create a title and you see everything's changed to Legacy Title Properties. Now, instead, whenever we're in the program window working on the clip in the timeline, you'll see this new Text T Type tool that we can just click anywhere in the clip and type out whatever we want. So it kind of feels familiar to Photoshop and it's leaning towards a bit more intuitive way of creating text on our image. So as soon as I type, you'll see that this actually appears as a graphic in the effects control panel. It's called a graphic. And if we're in the essential graphics window that we had opened up, there's a lot of adjustments that we can make that we used to have to use the old legacy tools to make. So we can use the centering tools, we can move left and right, and you can adjust things like scale, rotation, and opacity. You also have the character and paragraph options to change the fonts, the alignment and the tracking and everything like that. And then after you create a certain style, you can even go to master styles and create a master text style. And you can name it whatever you want for easy use across several different projects. You can always just choose that same style. It'll pick the same font and all the other settings. Another cool thing is if you go to graphics, new layer, you can also choose to create rectangles or ellipses or you could choose to open a file graphic. So if I choose rectangle, I now have a shape layer that's placed in the same graphic file. So similar to Photoshop, we now have these two layers which we can organize behind and on top of each other right inside Premiere. So I can take the shape, I can take my move tool, stretch it to whatever size I want, and then adjust things like the color or the opacity. And I could actually animate this whole shape just using the positional keyframes or whatever keyframes we want to use. So if I could just quickly fade in and out of this clip and then both of those graphics would fade in and out. But you might not even need to do that because the really cool feature of this new update, one of my favorites, is the built-in graphic presets. So you do have to have a version of After Effects, either the trial or if you have a full CC subscription like I have here, to get this to work because if we go to Essential Graphics, and we actually go to browse, we can see a whole bunch of preset titles, social medias, lower thirds, that we can actually click and drag onto our project as graphic files. And some of these are linked to After Effects presets that animate in a certain way. And then all you have to do is click on them, go to edit them, and you can edit anything about them. So you can change the text with the text tool and highlight and make it say whatever you want instead of what the preset was. So I could make it say, whatever I want, and then it'll still hold those same animation properties that the motion template has. So there's some pretty cool ones here that if you don't want to build your lower third from scratch, which I do have tutorials on, that you can just plug in your name and they'll animate for you with these templates. Also, they've got some social media geared presets, like a quick like, share, and subscribe template. If you want to throw those at the end of your projects, they automatically animate. And it's a cool sign of some possibilities that could be coming in the future for other creators or someone like myself to be able to create type of presets in After Effects or Premiere and then use them for my own projects or make them available to you guys as well. Now switching gears into the essential sound panel that's new, if we're ever working on a clip and we highlight the audio of that clip, you'll see there's some new options that appear. So dialogue, music, sound effects, ambiance. So we can click on dialogue and have a whole bunch of easy to use presets that can make the audio either less noisy, balance out voices, make it more distant or close up. And we have these easy to use sliders to increase noise reduction, 
the hum, reduce rumble, and adjust the overall volume quickly in this essential sound menu without having to go into all of these different filters and play around with, with confusing stuff. So this could be a great way for a lot of you guys to quickly fix noise issues in your clips or just make things sound better. There's also some different creative options for music or sound effects or just ambiance editing. So you can play around with these, but keep in mind that in the effects panel that's always there, you still have all of your old audio effects if you really want to go in there and adjust something specific. So as the title suggests for both of these essential graphics and essential sound, it's kind of just the core essentials that you need to mostly work with. And you can still always go back into the old effects or for now you can always go into file new title and use the legacy title tool if you still prefer to work that way or if there's just something that you can't do in the new feature. I do like the direction that this new type tool and essential graphics is going, especially with the layers options and everything a bit more easy to click and point. That was always an issue for me, but I'm looking forward to see how they continue polishing this more because at the moment it still doesn't feel quite perfect. Also, there were some other improvements in this update, things like MacBook touch bar support, better integration with Adobe Audition, some VR audio things, but I'll leave a link to check out all the rest of those details in the description below. If you guys did enjoy this video and you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and check out some of my Premiere Pro playlist for a ton of tutorials on video editing. Also, you guys can follow me on social media at Justin Odisha if you want to reach out to me. And once again, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.